Hi everyone. Um, okay, so today is Monday, February um, 13th, and today is the day after my son Samuel's uh, birthday party, and I am extremely exhausted. Um, <clears throat> my son woke up so cranky this morning um, to go to school that it was just awful. He, he gave us a really hard time this morning, um, but that just means that he had like a really good time in his party. Everything came out perfect. I mean, more perfect than I could have ever imagined. Um, you know, they had been saying for for the past week that um that it was gonna rain uh on Sunday, and I was worried about that just because you know obviously the party was gonna be outdoors and we rented this uh big bouncy house and um. And yeah, I was just concerned about that. The day before the party, my son started uh, complaining of stomach pains. And I actually had to go to the ER with him because um, he had been throwing up a little bit. And it was just crazy. Uh, you know, I was like, I cannot believe that um, this is repeating again. Because last year, the same day of his party, he woke up like throwing up. And it was just crazy. So, um, but you know, I... I just put my faith in God and I, and you know, I started praying. I prayed for him. I prayed for his healing for whatever it is that it just came out of nowhere. I'm, I mean, the doctors, the doctor said that, um, you know, it could have been, it doesn't look to me like it was a virus because it didn't last that long, but she said that it could be, you know, maybe something he ate that, um, didn't land in the right place or whatever. He just, I don't know. And he had an upset, uh, upset stomach, but, um, you know, I just like prayed for him and I prayed for his healing and, you know, I prayed for a beautiful day that it wouldn't rain and, and that's exactly what happened. Uh, yesterday morning we woke up to a very beautiful, bright, sunny day and my son was perfect, you know, hyper as always, you know, um, running around being his old self again and he was not complaining anymore of, you know, any stomach pains or whatever so yeah you guys you know that got me to thinking that you know God does answer prayers um if you ask with faith whatever it is that you ask in faith God does answer those prayers and um and sometimes we depend so much on God I know that we have to depend on him a hundred percent but sometimes we want to put every burden on God when we ourselves could do it we have the power we have the power in our own hands with prayer to make things happen in our life and you know this morning it was funny because this morning I woke up and I started thinking um you know I noticed how God works and how you know when I ask for things in prayer um, he makes it happen. I know there's a time for everything and you know, he, he makes things happen in his own time. And yes, you do receive what you ask for, but it's not when you want it. It's when God wants it. And, you know, I just got to thinking about how, you know, I asked for this, you know, in regards to my son and everything, the whole deal with the party and blah, blah, blah. And how, like, he made that happen. Like, I, I prayed for it. I prayed with faith. Not only did I pray, but I declared it. Because, like, a few days before my son's party, a lot of people were, like, calling me up saying, Oh, my God, Mon, pray. Because, you know, like, I saw the news and the weather says that it's going to rain that day. And blah, blah, blah. And I kept saying, look, relax. It's not going to rain. And that's that. You know, I declared it. I spoke it out with faith, you know. I didn't go like, oh, my God, damn, I think it's going to rain. You know, oh, my God, I hope his party doesn't mess up, blah, blah. You know, I didn't speak negative. And that's the one thing that that I've been trying to teach those around me. I mean, including my mom. My mom calls me up sometimes, too, you know, and she's worried about something and you know she tends to think negative most of the time and <coughs> I told her 
straight out, look, don't mention it to me anymore. Whoever calls you up and tells you, oh, look, I heard that it's going to rain on that day, blah, blah. Just say, look, I don't want to hear it anymore. Don't mention it to me anymore. You know, that's it. Whatever happens, happens. But I know it's not going to rain. And if it rains, so what? We're still having the party. We go indoors then, whatever. No matter what, the party's going to go on. Nothing's going to spoil my son's day. So, you know, just thinking of that, how positive speaking, not only thinking and praying and asking, but that positive thinking actually does make things happen in your life. The same way if you think negative, if you speak negative, if you feel negative things in your heart, that's what's going to manifest. I mean, it's pretty simple. It's you're, you're reaping what you're sowing. Whatever you sow in life, you're going to reap it back. So, you know, I got to thinking about how, okay, you know, I see God working in my life, you know, and even the littlest things, you know, even things that we might consider petty, but to God, everything is important. Everything that concerns us is important to God. So, I got to thinking, okay, um, you know, I see God working around certain situations in my life and like he answers right away sometimes, you know, in certain areas. There's other areas. <coughs> Sorry, I'm still trying to get over a cold. There's other areas that he takes longer than, you know, what we would like him to. You know, sometimes we want things like fast food style. You know, drive through, bam, put your order in, you get it right away. Things don't always work that way with God, unfortunately. I mean, I'm a very impatient person. I'm sure most of you out there are too, you know, and you want things right away. Whatever it is that you ask for, you want it right there and now, you know, but sometimes it doesn't work that way. And I was thinking, you know, in regards to Samuel's healing and the whole thing about the party, the weather, blah, blah, blah. My prayers were answered like this, you know, and then I woke up this morning thinking, wow, God, you know, you're so amazing. Yesterday was such a beautiful day. It was such a perfect day. Everybody enjoyed themselves. My son had a wonderful time, which is was mattered to me the most. You know, I don't care about me. I care about my son. As long as my son is having fun, I'm happy, you know, and <coughs> I woke up thinking that. And I'm like, wow, you know, you answered my prayer right away. Yet for the past five years, since 2007, that my husband and I started with this TTC journey. Um, and what's the delay? You know, I thought, you know, I've been, I've been waiting for that for so long, you know. And I thought to myself... I don't know, maybe I put it in the back of my mind like I've prayed for it, but I haven't really, really, really persisted so much in prayer for it. So I thought to myself, you know, maybe I'm not praying hard enough or whatever, you know, but the reason I haven't is because there was one time that a friend of mine said that her father told her this. Her, her daughter, th this woman, which was my friend, um, had been praying for a long time because her daughter abandoned her. Her daughter went to live with her dad <coughs> and her stepmom. And for some reason, this girl totally turned against her mom, which is my friend. And she said, I um, never want to see you again. I don't even consider you my mother, blah, blah. So this woman had been praying for a long time. Constantly, constantly, constantly praying, please, God, return my daughter to me. She had been suffering a lot because of this. I mean, I can't even imagine what that woman was going through because it's hard to, you know, to know that your children don't love you and have just turned their backs on you. So this woman one time said to me, my father told me that, Robin, God heard you the first time, like saying, stop asking for it. You know, God heard you the first time. Just because you keep repeating yourself doesn't mean it's going to make him work any faster. So, you know, all these years, that has stuck in my mind. And I've been thinking, you know, sometimes 
you don't have to keep persisting and asking God for the same thing over and over again because he already knows your heart. <coughs> I'm sorry, guys. He already knows your heart. He knows what you want. He knows your desires. So why keep asking for it? You know, you're bugging God. If you keep, you know, this was my mentality. If I keep bugging him about the same thing over and over again, I'm just showing him that I don't have faith in him, that I don't really believe he's going to do it. So that's why I keep bugging him and persisting him. But after reading this morning's devotional on my phone, I could tell you guys that all these years I have been very wrong. You know, parents are not always wise in the advice they give to their children. And even though this man was not my father, he was my friend's father, um, I took that advice towards me because I thought, oh, you know, he's a parent, you know, he's a wise man. And maybe he does have a point, you know, maybe we shouldn't bug God so much about the same thing over and over again, you know, but after I started thinking about that this morning, let me look for, I'm, I'm looking on my phone for the devotional that I read this morning, you guys, because, um, God totally like answered my prayer this morning in regards to this. And I was just in total shock <clears throat> because the same thing that I was thinking was what popped on my phone this morning in my devotional. And I was just like completely shocked because I couldn't believe that right there and then the same thing that I was thinking was what God was like responding to me at that moment was what he was trying to tell me. And let me look for it right here. If you guys don't know who Joyce Meyer is, I suggest you check her out because her preachings, her devotionals are amazing. I get a devotional each day on my on my phone and this was the this is the one for today. Okay? And this is the one that I read after I had, you know, been having my little one-on-one -on -one conversation with God this morning. <clears throat> and this is what it says. The title is called Pray Persistently. Scary, huh? Yeah. Okay. This is what she wrote. About 20 years ago, this next sentence changed my life. You do not have because you do not ask God. This short verse opened a door for me to discover the life-changing power of persistent prayer. At that time in my life, I was stressed out about a lot of different things. I was trying to make my ministry grow, trying to make my husband do this or that, trying to make my kids act a certain way, trying to make other people do things I wanted, trying to basically do absolutely everything on my own. As you can probably guess, it wasn't working. As a burnt out, frustrated young Christian, I realized one day that living in my own strength was useless. I needed to take my problems to God. In other words, I needed to pray more. When we understand God's love for us and his plan for us, then we begin, then we can begin to realize the doors that he wants to open for us. But we'll only realize these, these things when we're constantly talking with him, listening to his voice, and growing deeper in our relationship with him. In Matthew 7, 7, Jesus tells us, Keep on asking and it will be given you. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking reverently and the door will be open to you. So many times when we reach the end of our rope, we turn to prayer. But when our prayers are not instantly answered, we give up. Today, I want to encourage you to not only pray, but to pray persistently. Don't stress out trying to make things happen on your own. Give it all to God as you pray. Remember, he promises that when we seek him, we will find him. Let's pray and seek him with all our hearts. <clears throat> Prayer starter. God, remind me to bring my problems to you. I'm tired of living in my own strength. I need your guidance and your direction as I seek you daily. I will put my trust in you. And James 4, 2, hold on, is the verse that goes with this devotional. Uh, James 4, 2, in the King James Version says, Ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain, 
Ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. So, yeah. With that devotional right there, <coughs> sorry, God shut me up. And all these years, that mentality I had about not bugging God over and over again for the same thing because he already heard you the first time was absolutely, totally, 100% wrong. And, you know, many times I've read the story about in the Bible about the persistent widow. And, um, which was basically this woman who was, um, something happened to her and it was very unfair. And she was mistreated. And basically she went to this judge to get, um, you know, to, to get, um, to get treated fairly, you know, to get some justice. And, um, every day she kept going back and back to the judge and the judge would deny her justice and she would keep trying and the judge would keep denying her justice until one day she kept coming back and the judge just got fed up and he said, you know what? I'm just going to give this woman what she wants so that she could leave me alone. And after that, after that little story, uh, it says, Jesus says, that we should be like that widow when it comes to our prayers. That we should be persistent and not give up to keep praying without ceasing. So, I always knew that story. But, I don't know, I guess for some reason, like, you know, like the devotional said... Sometimes, you know, maybe deep down that you should keep praying harder and keep trying and believing harder. But it just comes a time that you just like in an, in a way you just want to like give up. And sometimes we do get lazy when it comes to prayer. And we only come to God when we have a crisis. We, we come running to him when we have already hit rock bottom. And it shouldn't be that way. It should be that we seek God at all times, in all areas of our life, even the little things, things that we might think are petty, but to God is not, because, you know, he, he is concerned about every area in our life. So yeah, you guys, with that said, I, that's all I wanted to say for today, because, you know, I, I woke up with a totally different view of things, and a different... <laughs> mentality a different way of thinking and just realizing that you know sometimes we are going about things the wrong way and <coughs> and we don't realize we get frustrated when things don't work out our way and whatever and we don't realize sometimes that you know that there's always if it's not working for you a certain way then there's always something new to try. There's always a, a different road that you could take. And that's pretty much what I wanted to share with you guys. Because I've just been like enlightened this morning with this devotional. And with this one-on-one -on -one time that I had with God. And it was just amazing, you know, to see how God responds to you. Through his word, he answers you. Um, sometimes, you know, you might not get that answer right away. But sometimes it comes sooner than what you think. So, with that said, you guys, I mean, this goes back to what I always say in all my vlogs. And I will continue to say it to the day I die. Don't ever give up. Don't ever lose hope. Keep trying, keep reaching for your goals, keep reaching for your dreams, and keep asking, keep praying. If you see nothing's happening, then that means you got to pray harder. And I apply this to myself because we need to practice what we preach. And I am not going to preach something. I am not going to sit here and be a hypocrite and preach something that I am not practicing. So that is why I am being 100% real right now and letting you guys know from personal experience how I've been doing things up to now. And from this moment on, things are going to change. Now I know what I need to do. In order to see results, we need to keep being persistent. 
We need to keep going and going and pushing and pushing through it till we get what we want. So that's it, you guys. Good luck. And oh, yeah, tomorrow's Valentine's Day. So happy Valentine's Day to you guys. I hope you have a wonderful time. Um, I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Um, my hubby surprised me with this wonderful, uh, beautiful dinner that we're going to have at our church. And um, the theme is called A Night in Paris. And it just sounds so awesome and so romantic so i'm looking forward to that and being you know surrounded with people that i love and care about and you know my church people are like my second family so it's gonna be great so i hope everybody else has a wonderful time a wonderful valentine's day and to all you teachy seers out there don't forget what i said keep pushing and keep praying and keep trying and keep believing because when you ask you receive bye guys